can only feel the number of people out there being like, what's going on? First and goal. Mahomes flings it. It's there! Hardman! Jackpot! Kansas City! Will Patrick Mahomes surpass Tom Brady? No, seriously, can Mahomes get it done? The resume he's built in his first seven seasons has been astounding. Two MVPs, one away from Brady, three championships in range of surpassing Brady, and counting stats that absolutely blow Brady at the time out of the water. There's a valid argument that Patrick Mahomes has already peaked higher than Brady and that he only needs the longevity to match. Some already think he's better all time than Brady. They think his resume that he's built over these seven seasons put him over, but the vast and I mean vast majority disagree. They are disgusted with the insinuation that Mahomes should ever be compared to Brady, how great and untouchable he is, and how mentioning Mahomes in the same sentence with Brady is a crime against humanity. Ironic, right? Literally two years prior, not only was Patrick Mahomes loved amongst fans and deemed the savior against another Tom Brady Super Bowl win, but Brady himself was hated and was the villain of the entire NFL. In fact, a year ago, people were rejoicing him getting eliminated from the wild card. What happened? What caused this about face on both quarterbacks? If you guessed it, you win. Brady retired. Or something like that. It wasn't just Brady calling it quits. It was a collection of events. A bunch of buildup that shifted the Chiefs from the darlings of the NFL to the villains that everyone loved to root against. The same year Brady got eliminated in the wildcard game, the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. This was number two for Mahomes, and it broke the MVP curse that held for almost two decades. It solidified him as the next great NFL quarterback and put him in a league of his own. Still though, the hate wasn't there. Sure, he wasn't the wonder boy that had risen to stardom in his first year starting, but he certainly wasn't hated. He was just recognized as a dominant figure. But then, the next season. At about week four, Taylor Swift happened and she happened big. The NFL cashed in on her appearance. They flashed a camera to her constantly during games. They made her their banner on Twitter. All the major sports pages flooded their followers' feed with the posts somehow related to her. NFL fans did not like this. Shit, they despised it. Now, before we continue, let me preface by saying this. This video is not propaganda to get you to listen to Taylor Swift's shitty music. This is for educational purposes only. Do not take this as me trying to convert you guys to being Swifties. All right, are we good? Let's continue. NFL fans were irritated of having Taylor Swift shove in their face and went in multiple directions. They not only started hating on Taylor Swift, but getting annoyed with the Chiefs. Everything they did was put in a microscope. And through that, they accumulated a sufficient list of finding their new least favorite team. Annoying fans, Swifties just got indoctrinated to the Chiefs fan base and are arguably the most insufferable fans in music. Annoying team, well, occasionally getting refs to sort of side towards you will do it for you. And most importantly, are they successful? Yes. Very much so. Them being so good not only put them in the limelight, it pushed all the Taylor Swift filling to their feeds, along with her fans too. It became a cycle. The more the Chiefs won, the more the Taylor and her fans got pushed to the front, birthing hate. And when they'd win more, they'd hit on them even more. Cause who likes seeing a team they dislike win? And with those wins, Taylor buzz became even louder. As the Chiefs made it to the Super Bowl, NFL fans were bombarded by almost exclusively Taylor Swift talk and were begging, no, pleading for anyone to stop the Chiefs from winning. No one did. Mahomes went on to win his third ring, third Super Bowl MVP, and thrusted himself again into the GOAT debate versus Brady. Obviously, as I said before, NFL fans were disgusted. They defended Brady with their lives, which is interesting because just a couple of years ago, they were on the front lines hating the same player. What's the common theme? Success. If you're too successful and dominant like Brady or Mahomes, eventually you'll be hated on. Why? Well, everything you do will be put under a microscope. A lot of eyes were put on the Chiefs this season, and with the normal disdain of the Chiefs, Chiefs getting calls their way and little actions taken during games, it's put in a pretty bad light and added on to the hate. A lot of NFL fans say that they only hate the Chiefs because of Taylor Swift. That's a lie and they know it. The only thing Taylor did was speed up the process of the Chiefs being the most hated team in the league. Combining the hate with the comparisons to Brady, it put fans in an uproar and caused the pitchforks to be put up. Isn't it strange? Where did the Brady love come from? Unless I'm insane, I recall Tom Brady being the most hated quarterback in the NFL for a better part of 20 years. Well, the simple fact is that he retired. After blue balling us last season, he came back and effectively fried his 10 plus year marriage for being blown out in the wildcard game. The dick eating all of a sudden is a bit more complicated today. We're obviously seeing the run of the mill. Mahomes could even sniff Brady. Mahomes would never be as good as Brady, etc, etc. But one of the arguments caught my eye. It was a tweet that said, quote, Mahomes will never survive in the era that Tom Brady played in. That 
instantly gave me flashbacks to the NBA go debate. As a chronic bronze sexual, I always find myself defending my king mm -hmm. against these error physicality allegations. But that's not the only similarity I noticed. About six months ago, I made a video talking about the quote NBA go debate. Check it out if you want to. Fair warning though, the audio in that video is somehow worse than the one I have now. In that video, I spoke on the go debate, but instead of giving my opinion on the matter, I spoke on how the argument is derivative and taxing. On brand, the comments missed the entire point of the video. And I saw unbelievable meat sucking on MJ's side. The messages were looking eerily similar to the ones defending Brady. Do you get the connection yet? Most of the MJ defenders are guys in their 40s. Quote unquote, old heads as we like to call them. They grew up watching tough, hardcore 90s basketball. Same way many fans defending Brady either grew up watching him or watch his career as a whole. This, what I just described, is nostalgia bias. But again, why? I mean, MJ and Brady both gave deep strokes to the entire NFL, probably including your favorite team. Why are they defending these guys? Well, let me just answer that for you. If a pregnant woman, <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, that was that was a bit of a that was a bit of a sharp turn. If a heavily pregnant woman goes into excruciating labor, goes through some unimaginable pain that most people can only imagine, you think she say, "quote I'm never doing this again," right? Actually, no. The brain works in an interesting way. Where after going through pain, it usually undermines how bad it actually was subconsciously. That's how some mothers think back and go, eh, that wasn't that bad. This is fortified by how they physically have a baby that they love as a result of the pain. Tying this back to sports, when you look back at the dominance of Reddy, a similar thing in your brain kicks in. Sure, at the time you hated him, but not only is one, his dominance an integral part of your childhood, where you tie the nostalgia around that to him, but two, you're not currently experiencing the constant thrashing that you were, and the hate has morphed it to admiration and respect. Same exact thing with the MJ and LeBron debate. MJ was the face of the NBA for the entire of the 90s he's a physical representation of so many old heads childhoods not only watching basketball but the culture around it so here kicks in the nostalgia and then the nostalgia bias nostalgia bias is an incredible phenomenon it's when the love of the time period or the player creates a fog detailing or recollection of events that causes you to create a skewed or biased narrative example number one the tough 90s hardcore allegations where they say that the 90s were super tough and hardcore to point where a 6'9", 250 pound LeBron James wouldn't survive. That's objectively false. If you disagree, I'll task you with some homework. Sit down and turn on a full 1990s basketball game. Not the highlights, not the compilation of the players fighting, just a bare game. I promise you, at the very least, the physicality has been extremely overrated. Example number two, the immortalization of Jordan. He again is perceived as flawless in the eyes of these guys. Why? Well, nostalgia weeds out all the negative parts and leaves them with the perfect image. These types of things birth poor arguments. Like the 6-0, and 4-6, and six, and 1-9 and argument. And we're seeing the same thing in the Mahomes versus Brady debate. Not only are people now bringing up Mahomes would never survive in the Brady era points as if their careers didn't interlap for like four seasons, but they're claiming that Mahomes is too soft again that's a strange thing to say about a full contact sport especially when you're the one sitting on your couch watching them the funniest thing though is how revisionist history is affecting how they like versus dislike players everyone claims they hate mahomes for quote cheating with the refs or quote whiting about calls and claim that that's the reason he will never be the goat i mean are they are they forgetting the entirety of tom brady's career seriously though what can I say? It'll never end. We'll always be stuck in the same cycle. Once LeBron retires, everyone who hated him will change too. If someone dares to rival him, that LeBron sexuals will rally and fight tooth and nail to defend our guy. It's human nature. The old heads aren't pulling up these stupid graphics because they're old heads. They're doing it because they're human. This passing generation is doing the exact same thing with Tom Brady too. In 2040, if Zatrick is a homes or someone pops up and starts lighting him up. Our brains would not only be fogged by the love we feel for these guys, but our enjoyment of the time period when we watch them. And over and over as the next generation of quarterback turns, the prior one will do anything to defend their guy in our hearts. Across so many sports, across decades, the same thing will happen again and again and again. It won't matter if Patrick Mahomes win 10 Super Bowls. There will still be the generation who shouts 2-0 while sipping their carrot juice bitterly it's never gonna end so i suggest you pick your guy pick your hill to die i already have my two prepare to defend your love